Every year, countless amount of fish, oysters, shrimp, and other aquatic life die to human activities. Many of which die off the coast of the United States, from the overabundance of minerals and nutrients caused by these activities. Today, we will be discussing the Gulf of Mexico dead zone. The Gulf of Mexico. And this is my dead zone. I work here with my nutrients. And my river. The Mississippi. Everything in here has a story and a price. One thing I've learned after 44 years, you never know what is going to come through those humans. Dead zones have existed throughout geological time, but the recent emergence of them on coasts and shallow waters is a result of human activities. Dead zones occur globally, but one of the largest is located in the northern Gulf of Mexico. A dead zone is a body of epoxic water, called such because the water is unsuitable for many forms of aquatic life. Epoxic water is defined as water that contains a concentration of dissolved oxygen less than 2 mg per liter. The Gulf of Mexico's dead zone stretches from the Mississippi River Delta to the upper Texas coast. Located on the inner and mid-continental shelf, their zone averages 5,300 square miles but has been as large as 8,500 square miles, about the size of Massachusetts. Dead zones are primarily caused by the altering of the food chain within these bodies of water. A saturation of nutrients, especially nitrogen and phosphorus, causes a chain reaction that eventually destroys the living conditions of the aquatic animals. The extreme amounts of nutrients come from the Mississippi River Basin, which drains rivers in approximately 41% of the continental U.S. Human activities, such as farming, create nutrients that enter the river through runoff. Once the minerals and nutrients enter the northern portion of the Gulf of Mexico, algae feed on them, increasing their numbers exponentially. Once they die, the algae sink to the bottom, where they are then eaten by bacteria. While feeding, the bacteria consume the oxygen in the water. Considering the increasing growth of algae, bacteria growth also flourishes. This leads to the eventual depletion of oxygen in the water and the formation of a dead zone. Considering the fact that the Mississippi River feeds fresh water into the Gulf and warm water stays near the top of the ocean, there is no chance for the oxygen-deprived water near the floor, called the benthos, to circulate. As a result of the lack of oxygen, animals either flee the hypoxic quarter or die trying. This leads to a massive loss of biodiversity in the benthos and aquatic animals in the dead zone area. Not only does this disrupt the food chain and the general ecosystem in northern Gulf of Mexico, the hypoxic water also severely damages fishing industries in the United States. There are steps that we can take in order to decrease the size of the dead zone. As humans, we can use fewer fertilizers and control animal wastes so that less nutrients can enter the waterways. In addition, we can monitor septic systems and sewage treatment facilities, and take more care in industrial practices in order to reduce the amount of nutrients entering the waterways. Although the Gulf of Mexico dead zone does not seem like a major issue, allowing more and more nutrients to enter the water and to create hypoxia quarter will have dastardly effects on humans and the environment, even if those effects have not been discovered yet. By understanding the causes and effects of the dead zone, we can help prevent it from becoming too major an issue.